folks, Nick Donatelier, and welcome back to the Houdini Firmograph series. Today, uh, we've gotten some requests for some different types of growth patterns. So we're going to be taking a step back and taking a look at how to do this simple veiny growth that you can use for things like plants or snowflakes, potentially like a frost growth. And you can use this as the base for a lot of really complex variations, as we'll see. So let's get started. I'll start with a sphere, changing the type to polygons, and giving it a scale of 5 and a frequency of 30. Now make an attribute noise, which is defaulted to color, and I'm going to bring the size up just a little. And in the fractal, I'm going to turn down the roughness. Next, drop a blast node, setting it to points and type at CD is less than 0.4. All we're doing here is breaking up the surface a bit so that our growth has some randomness to it. Now the primary node used for this growth is called find shortest path. And it does just that by creating a line from any given point to any endpoint uh, following along the mesh. So if we drop that node, you'll see that we have nothing. And that's because we have to set up these start and end points. So for the start, I'm going to make a group node, naming it start, and I'm going to change it to points. Now enable this bounding regions and bring it out 5 in the Z. And I'm just going to bring down the size a little bit. Now alt drag this and rename it to end. And then just disable the bounding regions so that we put every other point into this end group. Now, in your find shortest path node, grab those start and end points, and still nothing. So to get those lines, we're going to change this from, to from any start to each end. And you can see that we have some paths now. Now, to view how these could potentially grow, I'm going to drop a carve node, and then a null with the viewer on that. And in the carve, I'm going to uncheck first and check on second. As you move this slider, you can see what a potential growth would look like with these curves. Now one thing that I'm seeing is everything is very straight. And that's because the polygons on the sphere are also all uniform. So to break this up, I'm going to first do a remesh with a target size of 0.1. And that's looking cool, but it's also still very straight. So before that, I'm going to drop a poly reduce, keeping about a third of them and that's looking way more veiny now now if you view the reduce and turn that on and off you can see that all we're doing is just breaking up the evenness in the polygon spacing to get more organic looking lines that's really how you change the look using this node is just changing the geometry beforehand all right now let's actually set up our growth you can just use this carve if you wanted, but I'm going to go ahead and do something more custom. So just delete that for now Then drop a fuse node to clean up all the overlapping points. And if you middle mouse over before and after, you can see that this significantly reduces the amount since there's a ton of overlapping points as it grows from one end to the other. Next, we want to find the length of these curves. So drop a measure stop, setting it to perimeter. And I'm going to change the name to length. Now, this is on the primitives, but we want it on our points to be able to use. So I'm going to do an attribute promote, changing the original class to primitive and grab that length. Now, we also want to find which one is the longest. So to do that, we're going to do another attribute promote and grab that new length node and setting it to maximum. And if you set the new class to detail, and in our geometry spreadsheet, you can go over to this detail and see that we have a maximum length. But unfortunately on the points, it deleted our original length. So what we're gonna do is change the new name, name it length max, and uncheck delete original so we still have our length attribute. Now the last piece of prep before setting up the growth is doing a UV texture. 
set to points and rows and columns to get the value along each curve. All right, now make a point VOP and dive inside. So we'll start by normalizing our length. So bind in that length attribute and then do an import detail attribute to grab our length max, setting it to float and first input. Then do a fit on the length from zero to this max. And now bind export that to an attribute which we'll call len norm, meaning length normalized, uh, which we'll use later. Now if you plug this into CD and just slowly bring up this min, you can visualize what the values are here that we're getting. Now for the growth, we'll use the UV. So do a vector to flow off of that and then do a fit on the first value and plug that into the CD, which just shows us the start to end ramped. And you can see it better if you just swap the inputs to one and zero. Um, as you slide them in, you can see that we're essentially trying to do is raise this to drive our growth. So we're gonna do a fit on the frame fitting it from 1,001 to 1,050 and hook that to the source min. And you can see that we have some growth going, but on frame one, you see that this is just a solid color and that's because both the min and the max have values of zero. So to fix this, we're gonna alt drag out that fit and change the range from or to minus 0.1 to 0.85 so that the min and the max aren't the same and we're going to attach this to the main fits source max and now this is looking better but we want to make it less uniform so everything's not just growing at the same time so we're going to use our normalized length for that so before the both of these fits we're going to make an add node and make another fit off of the normalized length, changing it uh, its output to minus 100 to zero, and just add that to the frame. And awesome, that's our main growth. So now we're just gonna do some cleanup, um, hop outside of the point pop, and I'm gonna do a poly cut, typing at CD equals zero to trim off the black lines. Next, let's get some points growing off of these lines. So I'll do a copy to points, checking on pack, and make a sphere set to 0.04 and a size of two in the Z, just so it's a little bit longer than it is wide. And to make them grow on as opposed to just pop on when the poly cut is not cutting the lines, um, do another point VOP. And inside, we're going to do a vector to float on the CD and just bind export that to P scale. Now, to make the main lines thicker than the smaller ones, what we're gonna do is bind in that len norm, the normalized length attribute that we created earlier. And we're going to multiply the color by that. And just off of that, I'm gonna do a fit and bring up the minimum a bit so that nothing is at pure zero. And now if we get close, we can see that we have the growth happening, but these spheres are all just going in the same direction. So to fix this, I'm gonna drop a poly frame before the growth and change the normal to up and the tangent to N, since we wanna use the tangent as the normal to face uh, the spheres along the lines. And there you have it. That's our simple veiny growth setup. 
Now there's a ton of ways to add variation affecting the polygons before the find shortest, so have fun exploring this effect on your own. You could also, instead of copying the points directly onto it, use this with an attribute transfer, say, to transfer this onto other geometry. To see some of the extra details from the render, you can download the project files on the site, which has the lighting and all that set up. As always, would love to hear from you if there's any effects you want to see tutorials for in the future. Debating on adding not just Houdini things, so I'm curious if there's any other software or just general CG art concepts that you'd like to hear about. Um, hope you enjoyed this one, and until next time.